angle brackets made for solar panels are like four or five bucks each. That would equal like four hundred dollars to put four of those on each panel. Going over to Lowe's or whatnot, they wanted like three bucks or four bucks for just four little angle brackets. That would still been like eighty dollars. Instead, I bought conduit straps. They're like three fifty for twenty five of these. Here's what. Ice here. This drill press is going to be almost as loud as a Goodman because it's got water damage from our blood. Not the drill press, that's a good one next door. There we go. Angle brackets. Probably spent like 12 bucks. It's an eight. There we go. Simple L brackets. <laughs> About $12 worth for all 20 panels. It's also 5 o'clock, so. The sun is clocked at a pretty good acute angle. So it is starting and running this up to 40 hertz, this two ton compressor. Again, with head pressure that's probably pretty high being that it's 120 degree water. Go and run. Compressor's running. Let's see what my voltage is. About 289 volts. 90. I'm sure if I just drop down just a couple hertz, it would probably go right up to 300. It would be the 30 volts per panel. There's 298. 38 hertz. 7 amps on the three-phase side, 169 volts. Of course, that's pseudo-volts, but it's always pulsing the 300 volts to the motor. 95 degrees in the garage. That feels pretty cool. Obviously, not running at 60 hertz, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna get that like 30 degree drop I was getting on this. But it's not too bad, though. I had my thermometer in here. Water. It says it's 115 going in and 129 leaving. Open up in there. 75 will be actually a 20 degree split. So remember this compressor, it's not a fair comparison of what the AC unit in the house would be running. This is running the compressor at extremes. You know, your regular household AC, you started it up with uh, 100, and, you know, almost 120 degree water, feeding the heat exchanger and 95 degrees into the evaporator coil, you're gonna get some pressures and some amp draw on that sucker. So, 76. So it's pretty close to a 20 degree drop. This is how I have it rigged. This is a 100 foot roll. Got that. I'm going to put a disconnect on this, by the way. This is just temporary. So I just have positive going over to the two positive feeds. It's parallel and a negative over here, two negative feeds. Got 10 and 10 in series, and each, and then the two series banks of 10 are in parallel. Yeah, it looks cool. Now, these are used, so they might not be performing like new. 250 watts each, they're rated, so that would be. 5,000 watts.
out of the 20, obviously not getting that. I'll see what I'll get when the sun is a little more directly on it. I'm thinking I might be back to plan A though, just to run a two one ton mini splits. Cause those things ain't gonna take much current to run. Those things are just very efficient. I don't think I have any issues running two tons worth of a uh, mini split. Probably even a little more than that. Maybe a ton and a half in a in my master and a ton in the other room. Because again, the two ton compressor is being tortured, you know, to heat the hot water and cool a hot garage. The mini splits would be operating in normal operating conditions. Now that I've walked back out here, 94, 73. <laughs> Be a lot nicer if it was like 73 and 53, but you know, this is in the garage. Wake up a lot of heater, take a hold. It's up to 120, still heating the water. And I kind of see what kind of voltage I might need for the uh, if I could just put it right into the DC bus on a mini split, that'd be awesome. Might just have to buy one, take my chance on it, see what I can do.